okay, it's one, two, three, time math is here. I'm gonna start a new series called Carburetor Tech. And uh, I'm basically just gonna explain, <clears throat> do reviews of different carburetors. This one here is a Holly uh, 1920. Here's with the, uh, the float bowl housing. The vintage, this one was made in 1973. Uh, here's the float. One thing I'm going to say about this float from the model 1920 is they don't make these floats anymore. So if you ever want to get one of these, you actually have to buy the whole carburetor kit. And you can somehow find one that matches this. Which I don't think they make any of them. But <clears throat> this has uh, a lot of cool, cool features on it that I'm going to explain. I'll go over. Uh, first off, with this carburetor, one unique thing about it is the choke. The way this choke, here's the choke plate up here. But the way it works is there's this little push rod in here. And say it's a cold start, or even a uh, hot start, on like a summer day, you let it sit overnight and then you go start it in the morning. You go to pump it just like three times. And, uh... like that here's this right here this is the uh, throttle you can see the butterfly valve is open all the way basically when the whole linkage is attached this right here will actually close all the way it'll lock out it will lock out like that it'll be open slightly but for most parts like that <clears throat> so it'll warm up and then it'll eventually open. But if you don't do that, you'll notice that the RPMs will just start increasing so high. That's what these carburetors are famous for. So what you do is, you can just literally just tap this, and then that, that thing will just open up. So if you do a cold start on this carburetor, and you notice that that RPM's shooting up, you have to tap that throttle as soon as possible. Because these the engine's cold, you'll just uh, screw, yourself, screw something up in it. Another thing, the reason I have this one off my duster is this little piece in here. I'm going to try to zoom in. That's actually broken. So, uh, well, it didn't actually break. It's actually the ethanol ate through it. But this part right here is actually new. But I have a new carburetor on the way. But uh, basically the Holly 1920 was used in, with the 225 slant 6. It's basically used with no cars, like this is a 73 minute duster. And it's used in it. It has a 225 slant 6. That's what they mainly put this carburetor in. It's a great carburetor, bottom line. Uh, what else should I go? talk about another thing I'll say is these little inlet ports right here you never want to over tighten these if you do you'll strip the little uh, threads in there you get a whole new carburetor if you do that but I'll explain how the uh, float system works okay. float a lot of people get this mistake. They put the car the float in backwards. It always has to. You always want this right here to show on the front of the carburetor. So you just put it in like this. It's not too hard. Gives it all the line up. Sit it in like that, and then you put the cover on it. <clears throat> but I mean, for the most part, this is a pretty decent carburetor. They're famous for flooding out. If you go online, you'll find a lot of uh, a lot of stories of them flooding out. This one right here was just famous; like it, it always flooded out. For the most part, it's not a bad carb, though. I'll say that. It's not a terrible carb. If you can get these things adjusted and fine-tuned right. A lot of people are afraid of these hollies because they don't 
fully understand them. So they just go and put an Edelbrock on. I'll say something. Edelbrock carburetors work, but they don't perform as good as the Holly. Hollies perform. You put an Edelbrock on anything. If you don't understand the Holly. But this is definitely a vintage carburetor. It has the vacuum lines on it. Another thing that I'll say with this carburetor uh, for the linkage, there's two of them that they had. I think it's a Holly 1945 is the other one. And there is a little vacuum port on the back of it to where you can actually have the throttle linkage run into it, which is a pretty big problem with these. So you just have to cut, cut the little vacuum thing and plug it but, uh, I think for the for the most part this is a, this is a pretty good review of it pretty good carburetor oh, here's a close-up of it Holly Warren Michigan Okay, there's that. Uh, um, next video will probably be about a, uh, I'm going to do a review of a throttle body unit.